most of the videos that you'll see in this course will follow a particular pattern and we would suggest you to do the same in your interviews or even at your job. When you have to design something for a low level design all the way up to code, we suggest you move in a way that takes requirements into code in a step by step process. What are these steps? The first one is to note down the actions that can be performed by a user. This is the most important step when it comes to gathering requirements in a system design interview. And you'll see what kind of a tool will be used for this. It will be called a use case diagram. The second step is to note the state and behaviors required for these actions. All of this will be easier to explain with an example, but just note that state is the variables that you usually have in a class or the data entries that you have in a database. Behaviors are things that you do with it, which means that your class may check out a book, in which case the state of the user will become book minus one user dot book equal to null because you have just returned the book. This would be the state and the behavior would be user dot return book. This would be the function that you have. So this function would actually do this to the state. That's the basic idea of state and behavior. The state and behaviors will be captured by the class diagram. All right, so the class diagram is the second part of our process. And finally, the third step, defining complex behaviors. In the new ML, this is called an activity diagram. That's part number three, it's optional. So you might see some places where the behaviors of the objects are very complex. You don't want to just think about, you know, what kind of a API am I going to build or what kind of functions am I going to define in the object? I need to first talk about how is this behavior even going to be implemented? And then I go back again and fix my class diagram. Okay. We'll take some examples where activity diagrams make sense. Uh, in many cases though, you will see that they are totally optional means that they don't make sense. So we'll, we'll take a look at those cases also where an activity diagram is not at all necessary. Only after you have these three things done. So that is once you have defined the actions, then you have the state and the behavior, and then you have all complex behaviors modeled out. Do you code? This comes from almost all three diagrams, but primarily it comes from the class diagram because the state and behaviors that you're going to store is stored here. And you'll notice that if you follow this process, you will code much better, much faster and much cleaner. In our case, better would probably mean that, you know, the, your code is a more efficient and b more extensible. So you have all of these benefits which come because you have planned your way through. This is not some sort of a method that we have invented. This has been there for ages. If you know about UML diagrams, this method has been used for a very long time in software engineering, which help you define your requirements and the kind of code that you'll be building and also allow you to sometimes auto generate code, right? You won't be able to do this in an interview, but you can definitely do this in your job. So this is an idea that we are going to be using and you'll be seeing that we are able to move at a very good pace thanks to this kind of a framework.